Hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Cohen. I'm an assistant professor of communication studies and today I wanted to tell you a little bit about some of the things I do when I'm doing my research. Um, so very broadly speaking, I'm really interested in social media. Um, when you hear that word social media, like most people, you probably think about things like social network sites like Facebook or Twitter, or maybe even text messaging with your mobile phone or something like that. And yes, that is what I study. Um, but another thing that I study that people don't always think about when they hear the term social media is I, I study the types of social interactions that we have around more traditional media. So think about things like book clubs where people will read a book and get together and talk about the books or think about when you have um, uh, shows that you like to watch with other people, uh, maybe a Walking Dead party or, or Super Bowl parties or just the type of thing that you uh, uh, like to do with your roommate, right? Um, so I'm really interested in sort of how we use these more traditional forms of media in social ways. Um, a lot of research on media effects or, or trying to figure out what the social influence of different types of media is um, focuses on individual media use. So it would um, we would study, for instance, how people respond to a particular commercial, um, but usually that research doesn't think about how a lot of times when we see a commercial, we're with other people. So it, it's not a pure sort of direct um, effect from that commercial to the person watching it because there's other social influences in the environment when people are consuming that commercial. Um, so those are the types of things that I like to look at. One of the um, areas I'm really interested in is uh, looking at emotional contagion effects when people are watching media with other people. So um, emotional contagion is pretty much what it sounds like, sort of the contagious spread of emotion from one person to another. Um, think about how um, you see somebody yawn and then you find yourself yawning and you didn't even think about it, you just sort of caught that yawn. Um, the idea is the same thing can happen with emotions. Some of you, for instance, may have had the experience where you are, are hanging out with somebody and maybe they've had a bad day or maybe they're just a Debbie Downer and for no reason in particular, you realize that you are starting to feel blue. Um, and not necessarily because you're even empathizing with them, just because their mood has somehow uh, transferred onto you. So that's emotional contagion. Uh, and what I'm really interested in is how when you watch with other people, um, that emotional contagion might, for instance, be able to enhance your enjoyment of something because it sort of intensifies the emotions. You could get uh, contagious emotions from whatever you're watching. Maybe you're watching an actress who's smiling and, and, and that makes you feel happy. Um, but uh, the idea is, is that in addition to that, when you would be watching with other people, um, there'd sort of be this larger pool of emotion that you could sort of uh, pick up on. So some of my research, um, one of the projects I did with actually uh, one of our doctoral students, who won't be a doc student much longer, Alexander Lancaster, um, we did some survey research asking people sort of um, about different tendencies they had um, for emotional contagion. Some people can be more susceptible to picking up on emotions of other people. And then we asked about ways they, that, that they like to share media experiences. And what was really interesting is that you know, people with high levels of emotional contagion tended to like having co-viewing experiences in person which makes sense if you think about it, because they probably like picking up on all those emotions when they're with other people. Um, but what was interesting is that um, it had nothing to do with whether people like to engage in social TV experiences where they go online, maybe Twitter, or they text message people while they're watching television. Um, but what did predict that is a need for belonging. People who um, tend to have more of a need to fit in and be around other people um, seem to uh, really uh, gravitate more to those social television experiences through social media, traditional social media, like social network sites and things like that. Another interesting study we did, um, um, Alex was on this project, also um, another professor here, Dr. Nicholas Bowman, uh, we did a study trying to actually uh, map out um, that spread of emotional contagion in co-viewing experiences versus solo viewing experiences or when people were just watching alone. And I should tell you, this is kind of a hard thing to look at normally because you can ask people how they were feeling, like what their emotions were at a, a given uh, time, or even if they were with somebody or not when they were watching something. But the problem is, is people often don't remember these things very well um, because sometimes it's such a natural thing that we do, we don't really have a special spot in our memory for it. So that's one challenge. Um, another challenge is, is we could theoretically bring people into a lab and sort of um, put them into an artificial viewing situation um, and see 
how they respond to having co-viewers versus non-co-viewers. But one of the problems with that is that it's not what we would call ecologically valid. So it doesn't really reflect maybe what people do in the privacy of their own homes. So we're not sure if that how much that really tells us. Um, to get around this, though, we, we decided to try a, a kind of a, a new novel uh, way of collecting data to find out how viewing with other people affected emotional contagion processes. We did what's called experience sampling um, and we used people's cell phones. So we had a bunch of people sign up for the study and they all gave us our cell phone number and then during the course of a week we would randomly about um, oh, about three times a day send them a text message with um, a small little survey that they would just text back to. And um, in that survey, we were able to ask questions about what they were doing in that moment. So we didn't have to worry about them not remembering anything because we were asking them right there. And we could ask them things like, are you with anyone? Uh, are you watching something? If you're watching something, what are you watching? How are you feeling right now? So in just that small little survey, we got all the information we needed to actually be able to compare those people who said that they were with somebody versus the people who said they weren't with somebody when they were watching television. Um, and what we found was is that people who have a greater tendency to catch other people's emotions um, when they're watching alone, that didn't seem to matter. It didn't seem to affect their level of happiness or their level enjo of enjoyment, which is kind of interesting because you would think that they would still be um, picking it up from the television show, like a, a, a higher level of um, emotion, um, even if they didn't have other people around them. But, but it didn't seem to be working like that. But interestingly, if people were co-viewing with somebody else, it kind of activated that emotional contagion that they were already predisposed to. And what we saw is, is for the people who were watching with other people, those uh, people with the predisposition for catching other people's emotions did report higher levels of happiness, which then um, led to experiencing greater enjoyment while they were watching television. So that was kind of an exciting finding. And again, it's a really, it's a particularly exciting finding because we're able to show that this happened in people's natural environments, right? And what this research is really good for, besides, again, understanding more broadly about how media experiences differ when we're uh, alone versus with other people, um, this is also really important, I think, for um, market research and um, research on, um, t for instance, television programming and really understanding um, what people want out of their media experiences. And um, I think it also is really important to help inform things like social media campaigns. Like for those of you Walking Dead fans um, who maybe like to uh, not just watch the show while it's happening, but go online and converse with other people or uh, post spoilers on different um, websites, right? Uh, I think it helps us understand um, what kind of connective experiences people want out of their television. But okay, I think that's it. Sorry it's a little long. I get really excited about the research, but um, 